it's John Crane here, and this is part three of this shower build series. If you haven't watched part one and part two, you're gonna wanna go watch those two. I put down the uncoupling membrane, and I also install the Dietrich heat heating cable. I show you how to set up the thermostat, the whole nine yards. Go back and watch those two. Now in part three, I'm going to cover the Curdy waterproof membrane that goes over the backer board. Now this is pretty interesting and this is the whole reason that I decided to film this series on doing this shower was because of this Curdy membrane. And this stuff leaks. Now if you go over to Isaac Ostrom's YouTube channel, Tile Coach, he has done some extensive research showing that these systems leak He's had some solutions over there. I decided to make this video to show how I built this shower so it doesn't leak. So some key things in installing this Curdy membrane, I'm using Multimax Light Thin Set. Now that is great for bonding these layers together. If you use some other thin sets, the water seeps through the layers, gets back behind the waterproof membrane. Now that is no good. Now I've also gone to another level where I am overlapping the waterproof membrane such, uh, you know, the same as if you were doing flashing on the outside of a house. I like to overlap these layers. It just seems like common sense to me that you would overlap the layers as they work their way towards the drain. And then thirdly, I decided to use the Hydroban Roll-On Waterproof Membrane. This is a membrane made by Laticrete. You put it on with a roller, and I think that is great. I sealed everything in this shower with that, with a couple coats. So this is kind of a long video. You're gonna watch the whole thing. This is for people who are installing a shower like this. I wanted to show in some detail how this goes all together I didn't want to just skim over everything real quick and at the end of the video you really don't know what to do on your shower. So this video is for people who are working on a shower. Uh, I got many more parts coming. I'm going to show the tile, I'm going to show how I do the LED lighting in here, steam shower. There's a lot of parts to this shower build. Alright, I know this is a bit of a long video so let's get busy and here we go. Alright, now I'm going to cut some pieces of the Schluter Curdy membrane. If you're not familiar with this, this is a fleece waterproof fabric, waterproofing that you put on the inside of the shower walls, uh, on the floor, on the ceiling. I'm gonna do the whole thing in this Curdy membrane. So I'm just gonna cut a couple pieces of this. Now this membrane cuts easily with a utility knife and the grid that they have printed on the membrane makes for nice square cuts. All right, what I'm doing right now is just a dry fit of all the Curdy membrane and the corners. I got the inside, I got the outside corners. I tell you, this is a small fortune in all this Schluter stuff. These corners aren't cheap. And I don't know about you, but I'm an old school guy and you look at these Schluter systems and the way they tell you to install it, uh, I don't know, it doesn't jive with me. I like. You know, when I'm doing flashing on a house, outside of a house, and the flashing should always overlap. And they're showing in here that, right, you could have like this piece, just like this, and then you come in with your corners like this, and you stick all this to this, right? Well, now you get your water coming down. I like this piece overlapping this piece like this, just like that, right? So that's the way I'm gonna do it. And as we've seen in Isaac's videos, uh, you know, Tile Coach on his videos, these Schluter systems leak, right? So I'm gonna do it my own way, the way I think it should be done. Everything overlapped and right, I know, right? Oh, Schluter, right? You gotta, you know, do it exactly like they say, eh, baloney, right? I'm gonna do it, you know, I'm gonna do it. And then plus, I'm putting the Laticrete Hydroban over the entire thing, the ceiling, the walls, the floor, the whole nine yards. That's stuff you can use in swimming pools, right? Great stuff. So anyway, right now what I'm doing is I'm pre-cutting all this stuff 
so I don't have to cut it, you know, why I got the thin set all mixed up. You don't want that going off. You want all this stuff cut ahead of time, like right here. See this corner um, uh, has to be cut down because of the height of my curb. So I'm gonna trim all these things, get it ready to roll. And then when the thin set's mixed, it's go time. I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'm rolling out some of this curdy band. And when you're cutting this, see these inside corners? You don't want the curdy band to run all the way into the corner and then you're starting to build up thick layers of this membrane material. So right where this notch is right here, that's where you wanna end your curdy band. So that's just a nice way you can come in here, right? And then just put a little line right there and then the curdy band just runs right to there and then you can just cut this with some scissors or a knife and then after you have it cut then you want to take it and you want to fold it just like a you're doing a drywall corner so you get a little pre-fold on this and you got to give it a, a, a good crease in order to get this to fold nicely and then I'm gonna come over the top of this with some more of this pretty sheet membrane. Okay, can you see how I'm building this layering system? We'll start with the floor, then we'll put in the curdy corners, then the curdy band around the perimeter, and then the walls will overlap all of that. All right, I just wanna show you with this curb here in the shower wall how I'm handling these corners. So this is a curdy outside corner. So to protect this whole corner, I'm coming in like that. And then see this, I can just fold that straight down. And then I'll do the same on the other side, just like that. So hopefully that's a good view. And then I will cut this right here. I know this turns into a little bit of overlap but I'd rather deal with that overlap than have anything leak, especially around these curbs. These curbs are notorious for leaking, so you really want to get this nice and sealed up. I'll deal with the extra, you know, 64th of buildup here on the layers. See that? That's gonna be real nice. All right, for the shower bench, right, we got our our corners, we've got the curdy band in the corner, and then, right, we're gonna have this piece overlap our curdy band and our corners, right? You see what I'm talking about with that water coming down, running over, always overlapping is the, the way I'm doing this. So then right here, what I'm gonna do on this top corner is before I put on this top piece, I will put on this curdy band, right? And this will come from here, overlap onto here, and then we'll bring our top sheet on. Hopefully all this makes sense, right? So we're always overlapping. I've got this bench seat pitched uh, a quarter inch or more here to the foot. So this is sloping down. The water's always rolling forward. All right, I am ready to rock and roll. As you can see here, I have all of the curdy cut and ready to go. I know we've got some light coming in the window. It's hard to see over there, but I got all the pieces laid out in the same order that's in the room. So here's one wall, there's another wall, there's the back wall, there's all the stuff for the bench. All right, right on folks. I wanna show you how I'm mixing up the thin set. I'm using the Lata Creek Multimax Light. So I got some water here. I got the mixer paddle. I got one of these egg beater mixers. I did use to use one of these in the past. This is more for drywall compound. This doesn't work too good. It makes a big mess. It's too big to get in there. So the egg beater style is a nice paddle. All right, the Lata Creek Multimax Light. I burned through some bags getting the wrong mix on this a while back. And this right here says on the bag, 
for a thin consistency, 5.4 quarts, that is total BS. I can't even turn the mixing paddle in there. It's like trying to turn hard rubber or something in there. It's awful. I've had to go up to 7.5 quarts of water to get a consistency that I like, especially for working with this uh, curvy membrane fabric that wants to be a little bit thinner, nice and creamy on the walls. I'm not going too thin. All right, so I got the water measured out here. These are four quart containers. So there is four, and then three and a half. Let's just poke a tape measure in there and see what the height of this is in the bucket. So we're right at five inches of water in the bucket, right? It's totally strange that they got 5.4 on there. That's, that's a bunch of malarkey. All right, I got the fan on in the window. I don't have one of those fancy uh, vacuum suction things you put on the side of the bucket. All right, and this goes right to the brim almost over the top, I have to put that much water in the mix. I feel like talking to the Laticrete rep and see what those guys say about having to put so much water in just to be able to turn the mixing paddle. The drill I'm using is a Milwaukee whole hog and these drills are a powerhouse. This is great for mixing up thin set. You're not gonna burn out this drill. All right, now the directions on the bag say to mix this and then wait for five to 10 minutes to let it slack, let it come together, come back, mix it again. It doesn't say anything about how long to mix it. It just says mix, wait five to 10 minutes, mix again. So we're gonna let this sit for a bit. I'll come back and mix it and get rocking. All right, now while we're waiting the five to 10 minutes, I just want to show you the trowel. Now, uh, Schluter makes a trowel like this called a Curdy trowel. It's an eighth inch by eighth inch notch. This is one I got off of Amazon MD, I guess, right? But that is the trowel that I am using to put on the Curdy membrane. You can also use a 3 16 inch V-notch trowel to do the same thing. All right, it's been about eight minutes. I'm gonna give this a All right, see that? See that consistency? That took nearly eight quarts of water to get that to that consistency. The bag says 5.4. Like, what the baloney is going on? And the thing is, this Multimax light is not cheap. 25 pound bag runs about 60 bucks. So if you mix it up to their directions, you let that slack, you're not supposed to add any more water. And the thing is stiff as a rock. Like, I did, I lost a couple bags. So I'm out 120 bucks on the Multimax light going by their directions. Usually in a thin set, I like to go by what the bag says and then you know the consistency will be right. It's gonna set up right, right, all those things. All right, it's go time. And I'm gonna start here in the base of the shower with my membrane. I'm gonna trowel in some of the thin set into our notches here, into our uncoupling membrane, the Dietra heat membrane. I should say, before I do any of the walls, I'm gonna sponge all this down with a little bit of water so it doesn't suck all the water out of the thin set. All right, here we go. And to start laying on some thin set. Right, now what I'm doing here is I'm working this thin set into the Dietrich heat mat. You gotta go in a couple of directions to get all the air bubbles out of the, the picture heat mat.
Okay, after you have worked all of the thin set into the Dietra heat uncoupling membrane, then use the notch side of the trowel to comb the thin set to the correct height. All right, and to drop our floor in place here. And then just line up the circle. Got a couple different tools, but one of them is just using this wood float. Okay, now what I'm doing with the wood float is pushing from the center out to the side. I'm trying to work out any air bubbles, also working out any lumps. You can see on the side, I'm pushing some thin set up out of the side there. That's excess thin set. You really want this fleece to bond to the thin set into the Dietra heat mat. All right, now that I got the floor nice and flat and that's looking good, I'm gonna put a piece of plywood in here. This is just some thin, I don't know, 3 16 inch plywood. All right, now I'm gonna work my way around in the perimeter. All right, now I'm going to apply these corners. All right, and I've got a couple knives here. Okay, the method here is to use two drywall knives to apply these corners. You stick one all the way back into the corner and then you use the other one to flatten out the thin set behind. You don't want to pull the corner out of the corner. One is holding that corner in place while you flatten out the thin set. Alright, I just want to show you guys, you can barely see it, but under that thin set is a curdy corner and now I'm going to come in on top with the curdy band on top of this corner and then I'm going to wrap a sheet over the top and that's going to come over the top of our curdy band. We're doing the John Crane old school layering system. Curdy schmurdy. We're not doing it that way. All right here's my pre-cut curdy band. I know this lines up Right there, curdy band. Should have went with the laticrete. See, that's what happened. I bought all this curdy stuff at first, and then I find out later that laticrete is making stuff that you can put in the swimming pool. on the floor, see that dotted line? And I'm gonna run a whole piece of curdy membrane right from the curb of our shower out this way. And then when I put that piece that caps the curb, right, it's gonna complete my layering system. All right, so I'm gonna spread some thin set right here, put down the curdy, and then put the curb piece on. threshold piece. Let's see, I'm just going to stick this right into the goop right there. I'm going to fold this right over the whole threshold. You don't want to get too carried away. You don't want to fold it all the way around because sometimes you can't work out the air bubbles and you know, work the thin set out. But that's all right. All right, the wood float is nice. Oh yeah, this is looking dynamite. All right, now I'm gonna work these 
Curdy Corners. Curdy Corners sounds like a grocery store or something. Going down to Curdy Corner, we're gonna pick up some Yoohoo. Couple Snicker bars. Might even throw in a Charleston Chew. Alright, so this one goes right there. Come in with our dual spatula. Flatten this all out. See back there. I need a little bit more. Now, now we got the goods behind there. Heard it. A little bit more slop right here. Right, right on, folks. This is just some music to wake you up. Darth Vader is not coming out, or Apollo Creed, or Indiana Jones, or whatever goes with this music. I just want to say this is not a one-minute Instagram video that doesn't show you anything. This is the real deal. I'm showing you step-by-step step how this all goes together. This is to help you with your own shower. Check this out with the foam around these fixtures. I'm doing this before the thin set goes on. All right, the floor and everything is set up. This is day two of doing the waterproof membrane. So I'm gonna start right here on this wall, our shower niche, niche, cubby hole, shampoo, shelf, soap holder, you name it. All right, so I'm gonna do this in a few pieces. I'm gonna layer this much like you would layer an exterior window with flashing. So I'm gonna work my way up. so often you should pull back the curdy and make sure you're getting good coverage you want this stuff to be stuffed well you want to make sure you got the right amount of thin set on there so it's good to peel it back every so often and this multi-max light is really nice for that where i feel like it really sticks well to this curdy membrane all right you see how i'm folding this into the bottom shelf. So I got this piece coming up. I'm doing this just like an exterior window on a house with uh, you know some brace bite core flashing or some Tyvek, that type of thing. I'm doing the same type of routine. It's a little bit different with its niche here. All right, and then We'll wrap this right around the edge here. And when you're working this, first you wanna work this wall. Don't wrap it all at once. You wanna work this all flat because if you've got any thin set squishing out the sides, right? It can form a big bubble in the corner here. So you wanna work it this way, then wrap your corner around. All right, I know the camera angle isn't the best, but I am starting with this lower corner. This is doing the whole overlap system. So I got a curdy outside corner. All right, so far, here's what I got. I got the two outside corners. Now I'm gonna put a couple inside corners. 
right, I moved the camera angle. I think that's a little bit better. Now I'm gonna come in with some thin set on this bottom shelf. All right, now I'm gonna come in with this weird looking sheet that should stick right here. This is overlapping our inside and outside corners. All right, folks, you see how I'm working this system. This is not how they tell you to do it in the Schluter manual. I'm doing it so each layer is overlapping the one underneath. This is just like shingles on a house, flashing on a house. All this water is gonna shed off of this and go right down to the drain. All right, there should be, my friends. Everything overlapping. Be like water, my friends. Be like water. Well, Bruce Lee, how about Jeremiah Johnson when Bear Claw comes and says, We're worth the trouble? Huh? What trouble? I don't know. You know, if you were a tile guy, I don't know if you would take the time to do this type of thing, but since it's my own shower, I think it's pretty good. I know there's a little extra build up on some of these layers, but I think it's just fine. I got it as flat as I possibly can, and uh, I think it looks dynamite. Here's a close look at this curdy. You can see here, this is a fleece type of membrane. So it has like a soft fabric fleece on this that the thin set can grab into and you want it to bond really well to the cement board or whatever surface you're putting it onto. So if you do have the thin set mixed too dry, it's not gonna grab into this. So that's one of those things too, right? I'm having to put nearly eight quarts of water into the Multimax light to get it wet enough to grab into this fleece. If you put it up too dry, right? There's a lot of complications that can come. If you mix it up too dry, you go to put this on, uh, right? It doesn't grab too well. You come back the next day, the whole thing just peels right off because it didn't grab into the fleece. So very important to get that mix right. I just want to show you that if you go up the middle, this is a, a five inch knife I'm using, and I'm pushing out all the air and I'm flattening the thin set. And then you can start working your way across, pushing out any air and any excess thin set and flatten that eight inch trowel height. I wanna show you here that I'm coming a couple inches onto the drywall. So I'm gonna bring the curdy out that far. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the tile's coming out that far, but I can cover the curdy with some drywall mud and feather that out into the wall. All right, now it's on to the ceiling. Now, I've done a lot of tile work, but I've actually never tiled the ceiling. So this is gonna be a first for me. So if I look like the Bad News Bears rounding first base and not quite making it, that is why. So let's give it a shot, you know? Especially with this multi-max light. This stuff is drippy, goopy. So I'm gonna have to get this on the ceiling and trowel it off. It's probably gonna be all over my clothes, right? Oh well, here we go. Almost forgot, gotta, I think this is a job for the sprayer, not the sponge. Get the ceiling nice and wet. <laughs> all right, now it's time for some mud. Let's see, all right. 
So far, so good. I'm sure old Sal de Blasi has had lots of blobs of this stuff in his hair. And luckily, this ceiling's only 10 feet tall, so I can reach it. All right, so far, so good. I got a few splatters on the old shirt and on the floor. I'm not gonna show you the floor, but it's all going pretty good. Now you can see this being a, a good case for that curdy board, but I do like the strength and the stiffness of this cement backer board is pretty nice. All right, looking pretty slick. I'm just gonna stick this up on the ceiling here. Got a whole cut for our rain shower head. All right, just looking at this here, I realized I didn't keep consistent with my overlap. This probably should have been on the ceiling first and then this in last. So it's the constant overlap, but <clears throat> oh well. Oh well, you know, that's why I'm gonna put a coat of Hydroban over this whole thing, right? Now the Hydroban, you could just do a coat of that and not put any of this stuff on. Right, I'm going the extra, extra mile here. All right, I'm just running some thin set down this corner. I'm going to put a piece of curdy band right here in the corner. All right, got all the corners done. Now it's time to put some of these little pipe flange curdy pieces around the pipe. Let me show you up close here. So they make these for a half inch and for three quarter inch pipe. And so that's nice. This is a little rubber seal here. And then I'll also put some silicone or some caulking around the pipe as well. You know, I used to work in the industry where we built concrete batch plants, big mixing plants. I built several of those. And I remember the workers that were working at those places using the concrete, it was mandatory that they had gloves on because you can get poisoning from the stuff like nickel and all the different things that go into the concrete. And uh, you can only imagine what's in this thin set. I remember the concrete batch plants we built, there was big fly ash silos and there was lots of fly ash was an additive into the concrete. Fly ash comes from smokestacks and uh, that stuff is definitely not good for you. All right, now it's been a couple days since I put on the Curdy with the Multimax light. I let that dry for a couple days and now it is time to put on the waterproof membrane. So I went and I got five gallons of the Laticrete Hydroban. Now this Hydroban, you put it on with a roller and a brush. So you put it on rather liberally. I'll show the whole process. Here's the old Ardex. Now I ordered this in and we know that this is junk, right? I'm probably gonna deep six this or I don't know what to do with it. Maybe use it to line a pond or something like that. But anyhow, right, too bad I ordered this in, but I'm glad that I'm not using it and I got the tile all done and find out later that the whole thing leaks. So spend the cash flow, get the hydro band. This stuff is for submersible locations. You can use this in a pool. Maybe that's what, you know, the whole system should switch to. It's just buying products that you use in a swimming pool to do the shower. Never mind all these weird, homeowner kind of, you know, shower systems. Go back just like you're building a pool or a hot tub. All right, anyway, I'm blabbing away here. Let's get in the shower. I'm gonna start rolling a coat of this Hydroban. I should say I'm doing two coats of this Hydroban. I'm gonna put one coat on, let it dry a few hours, and then put a second coat on. All right, so I'm just gonna work this right out of the bucket. 
and I'm gonna start with the ceiling. <sighs> Try to not let it splatter all over me. I think at first it just kind of smears around and then you can start rolling it. I should say that I prepped the whole surface with a light uh, bristle brush, just breaking off any little particles and then I ran a vacuum over all this just to make sure there was no dust on the membrane or in the shower. And I know you don't want to put it on too thin, so I'm trying to get this on liberally. You see, I got my, my tape out here. I'll do all the corners of the shower with this brush but I'm trying not to put it too thin. I want a, a good thick coating of this. It's your beautiful world. If you want a, a big tree right here, you put a big tree right there. This is your shower. You're the creator here. All right, now I'm gonna run the brush down all these corners. All right, now what I'm gonna do is paint the corner First, and then I'll use the roller and I'll back myself out of here. So I'm gonna hit all these lower corners and go around the drain and then back myself out with the roller. important get all this waterproof this is where the water usually runs out and rots out the curb and gets under the tile and so this is great I'm gonna run this waterproofing out over the floor that is coat number one I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours I'll come back and I'll put on coat number two you can tell when it's dry, when it starts turning a darker color. You can see right over there on the cement board where it sucked it in a little bit. That's drying out quicker. So it's, it turns like a darker, almost like olive color when it's dry. So I'll be back in a couple hours. All right, you can see this has dried to an olive green color that indicates that it is dry. Coat number two coming up. All right, right on folks. That is it for part number three. Be sure to join me in part four when I start putting some tile up. As you can see, these videos are a lot of work, so please show your support by liking and subscribing and maybe passing these videos on to a friend. I will put these all in a playlist so they are easy to find and you can watch them all at once. I'll also put links in the description for the tools used in this video. All right, right on.